is it better to use your home equity for yourself during retirement or to kind of hoard it, not use it for yourself and pass it on to your kids who may, may need it and may not need it. Um, thus is the, <laughs> the very level, uh, high level reverse mortgage dilemma. So I'm gonna go over, I don't know, just kind of like discuss some of this stuff with you. Nothing to, no statistics or anything, but just like what I've seen from, you know, doing reverse mortgages since 2008. I think I've helped probably over, a little bit over 460 seniors and their, their families now. But anyway, my name is Jason Ike Miller. Um, I'm on a, you can probably hear the birds in the background. I'm a, a little nature hike uh, in the Wellington uh, Nature Preserve down in well, Wellington, Florida in Palm Beach County. Although I do this, uh, do reverses all over the country. So let's look at that. Let's look at this and, and you tell me what you think, you know, comment below if you have an opinion. No, I mean, I guess there are right opinions and wrong opinions based on your situation, but uh, we'll kind of get into it and we'll see, kind of see what you think. So I have the, the majority of the big reason why people get reverse mortgages for the most part, I mean, there's a bunch of different reasons, but is because they have, they have their home, they live there for a while and they've got a, a decent amount of equity trapped in it. And ooh, check this out. This is a butterfly. I don't know what you're sitting on butterfly. You're eating looks like he's eating something anyway oh i'll be doing this throughout the <laughs> throughout the video if i see some some neat nature uh i will uh i will pan away from boring old me and show you something something cool so um a lot of folks that get reverse mortgages well they've got a lot of equity in their home they've got this they have this bank account but it's kind of tough to unlock it and they might have other assets they might have investments um if you're this is uh, october 2022 by the way so if you're watching this in October, November, December, then you know what's happening with the market. Your, your investments are getting decimated. My, my investments are getting destroyed. So yours are, yours are too. Um, so you've got the home equity, you've got these investments, but you can't, maybe you could have lived uh, on them before, but now they're getting, they're dropping and dropping and it's just a lot, it's a lot tougher when your when your two million dollars turns into one point two million dollars in your your sixties or seventies, you start scratching your head and you start thinking, "Man, am I able to live off of this stuff?" Uh, I don't know. Like we're gonna have to start pinching pennies. And what if the market continues to drop? And and this and I don't want to talk too much about inflation. That's a that's another <laughs> video. Um, we could go, certainly go down the rabbit hole, but it doesn't look pretty for this market. Uh, the Fed is going to meet in November and December, and they're going to, we project at least, that they're going to increase uh, the, uh, the the rates. I think, I think the projections are 75 basis points, which is three quarters of a point um, in uh, November, and then uh, 50 basis points in December. But who knows, maybe they could do it more, maybe they could do it less, and they're just trying to trying to stamp down inflation. But what that's doing is investors are looking at it like, like you and me, and they're saying like, whoa, geez, this, these companies aren't worth as much. Uh, let's, let's sell this stuff. So uh, that's, why, that's why investments are going down, right? They're dropping. So anyway, long-winded uh, way of getting back to uh, the lecture at hand or the subject is should you take, should you use your home equity for yourself or should you save it for a loved one? Should you save it for your kids? And I guess my my big my big picture is if you have enough in investments, oh, your five million dollars got cut to three and a half million. You're not really hurting. You're controlling your spending. Maybe you're a little bit older. Maybe you've got some health problems and you don't think you're gonna make it that long. By all means, if you can use your investments and safely and your financial advisor thinks that you're gonna be okay, then Use them, and you don't need to tap your home equity. Don't need to. It's there, but if you can live off other stuff, not a big deal. The vast majority of the folks that I work with, that I speak with um, daily over the phone, I get emails. A lot of stuff's coming from uh, YouTube, which is pretty neat. But a lot of the folks that I'm working with, they've got assets. They've planned, but their assets certainly aren't as much now as they were back in say January, February, March. And they're concerned 
And their concern is really, if this stuff keeps dropping and I have to keep accessing it, I have to keep taking out of my investments, I might outlive my money. And there was a study done, I think it was a couple years back. It was, uh, I think it was Alliance, one of the big financial uh, companies. And they did a study and they said, well, what do seniors fear the most? Is it dying or is it running out of money while living? And you're probably in that position, so you tell me. You know what? Comment below. Let me know what's, what's scarier. Neither are good. Both are scary. But what, would, what keeps you up at night? Well, the study found, I think it was almost 70% of the folks who responded to the, to the study said that running out of money while living was way scarier than dying. And psychologically, that makes a lot of sense, right? If you die, we all die. If you die, you're dead. Scary, really scary. I can't imagine it. But to be alive and to have your investments whittle away and whittle away and then start pinching pennies and then realize that, shoot, I might not make it. What if there is a, uh, what if you have a medical emergency? What if you've got to help your kids or your grandkids? There's damn Murphy's Law. It, it, it pops up when you sure as heck don't want it to pop up. So you have these variables, you have these, these things that can happen and you need to have, you need to have a safety net. You need to have money in your piggy bank to just to be there, just in case you need it. So when we when we think back, I'm going off on tangent. I always do this. If you if you've seen my other videos, I I go on tangents quite a bit. So if you're in a position where you know your money and just again like most of the folks that I help, well, they're they have assets but the assets are getting killed. They're getting crushed right now by the market. And what's gonna happen in two years, three years, five years? I, I don't, nobody can predict it. There's no magic crystal balls, but you've gotta protect yourself. So, and a lot, of these, a lot of these people that I help, they have families, they have kids. Now, most of their kids, I've spoken to a good number of their kids and their kids are like, well, you know, we'll take what, whatever is left over, but it's mom's money, it's dad's money. We. They bought the house, they paid for it, they did all these good things in life and they brought us up pretty okay. So it's their, it's their money to take. Plus we got kids. So like my parents are in their seventies and if something happened, I mean, I could help them out for a while. Actually, I'll give you an example. They, they live in Cape Coral and about two weeks ago, they had that, that killer uh, storm. They ride right, right in the eye of Hurricane Ian. So, Thankfully, their house didn't get flooded, although it was close. It was built up like eight feet, and the storm surge came up just over seven feet. So they got spared by this much. But their electricity was out, and uh, tiles were off their roof, and so on and so forth. So they came, and they stayed, uh, they stayed with my family for about a week. And they were really grateful, and my kids were super, super happy that, that Grandma Janie and Grandpa Phil were there. Um, but again, another tangent, but my, my point is that kids will help as much as they can, but your kids have their own families and they have their own expenses and they're trying to get ahead of, at life. So for them to pay mom and dad's bills, whereas, you know, they, they'll do what they can, it would, it would make things really tough on the kids. So again, getting back to home equity, do you take it or do you leave it for the kids? Most of the folks, especially in this world, you know, this time, this financial, these, these trying financial, that sounds, sounds dramatic, but it really is trying financial times. You know, most of the folks that I'm working with, they've made the decision and sometimes with their kids help and sometimes saying, Hey, you know, it's my house. My kids will get what they get. They don't need to know, but they're making the decision to help themselves. And again, their kids will get, they'll get what they get when it's all said and done, when it's left over. But the, again, the, the, the vast majority of the folks that I, that I help, they just, they feel like, hey, this is my house, this is my money, 
I've built it up. I'm scared about, I'm, I'm afraid, legitimately afraid about my investments. What's gonna happen if this market keeps dropping? What happens if the market keeps dropping and I keep taking out of my investments? What happens, let's go down this rabbit hole. It's called sequence of return risk. If you're into financials, you'll understand what it is. But basically, go to the third level, right? What happens, the market drops, I take money out when the market's down, which is very bad, but then what if I have qualified money? Meaning, what if my investments, they're in an IRA or another vehicle or in stocks or a 401k that gets taxed? So you have the market dropping, you have taxation, and you're having to take money out to be subject to these taxes while you have less of it. That is, I think that's without having a dictionary in front of me. That's pretty close to the definition of sequence of return risk. Not good, no bueno. So how do you, how do you mitigate that in a market like this? Well, you turn to your home equity. Reverse mortgages, right? This is my expertise at least. There's other stuff, there's like shared equity programs but they don't give you, I think they max out at giving you about like 25% of your equity, which could help but a lot of times it isn't it isn't enough to be a to be a game changer so if you do a reverse instead of instead of taking out of your investments once they're down and getting taxed on it you're taking out of your home and this is a weird world right now and you can I mean you look at home values you've probably looked at your home value on Zillow and if not pause this video go to Zillow and check out your home value now versus where it was three or four years ago. It's crazy, even though the market's starting to drop a little bit, it topped, these interest rates are very high. Um, the market is dropping and I think, not drastically, but I think it will continue to drop. But right now, despite that, your house is worth way more than it was worth a few years ago. Again, check, out, check it out on Zillow, realtor.com, Redfin, there's a bunch of free websites that'll, that'll show you that give you that information but your house value for the most part is so high and your investments are very low so where it is where does a smart person where do you take what do you take from do you take from an asset that's up here or do you take from an asset that's all the way down here what do you do well, I'll tell you what the public does <laughs> real quick. And right, I'm gonna go this way. I think I'm going the right direction. Um, tell you what the public does. The vast majority of investors will buy high because it's FOMO, right? Right, the stock market's going up, the real estate market's going up. Oh my goodness, I can get this. It's, it's overpriced, but it's gonna stay awesome forever. And they buy high. And then when the market crashes, they panic, sometimes, it's just psychologically they can't they they panic because they see they see the the uh, investments dropping and they're like oh, I can't be part of this anymore I have to sell so they'll sell either for that or they'll sell out of necessity because really they they need to sell this stuff so that they can turn on the lights neither of those are good <laughs> buying at the top of the market or selling or taking out of investments at the bottom or real estate at the bottom of the market no bueno but that's what mostly everybody, that's what, that's what the public does. So now we're using, in this market, it would be different if, the mar if, if things were switched. It would be different if your home value is worth very little and your investments were very high. In that case, I'd say, hey, hang on to your, you know, don't, I wouldn't over leverage your house when the value is so low. Uh, I would use your investments because they're, they're so high and what's, What's probably gonna happen, they'll probably drop and the home values will probably come up, but we're, we're opposite. So we are, we're in a world right now where, where home values are about as high as they've ever been, although they've dropped a tiny bit. Investments are so low. So what do you do? Do you sell the investments? Not when you can take out of your house. You're going to leverage your house. This is a smart thing to do. This is, by the way, not just me. This is what financial advisors tell me and CPAs tell me. But, and it makes sense once you conceptualize it. 
you're gonna use your home's, equ your, your home's equity when it's at an all-time all high. And you are going to save your investments because if you sell low, you've lost. But if you access your home's equity when it's high, you're winning. Kind of playing, <laughs> it's a <laughs> pun, pun not in, I just thought in my head and I had to laugh. You're playing with house money. It's really, really what you're, what you're doing. And that is why in this market right now, again, different markets are different. You have to use, you have to think things differently. But right now, if you're relying on your investments to live and you have equity in your house, you're using that equity before you use those investments. And does that mean your kids might get a little bit less in the end? Maybe. Or maybe the investments that you save, now you're giving them a chance to grow again. Maybe if you pass away, you're gonna, instead of passing a massive amount of home equity to the kids, maybe you'll pass higher investments to the kids. Maybe you don't care. Maybe you say, hey, I love my kids. I'll do anything for them, but I've got to do for me first. Maybe this becomes more of a survival thing. Depends, depends on your situation. But in almost every case right now, and I'll end on this because we're going to 16 minutes. I've got a big, check this thing out. It's a big old tower to climb that looks out all over the, uh, the environmental preserve. But it's kind of boring talking while I'm, <laughs> while I'm walking upstairs. Plus I'll probably get out of breath because I hurt my knee and I can't really run as much as I, I want to now. But anyway, in every, getting back to what you're here for besides the, the neat scenery. Almost every, no, strike that. Every time in, I think every scenario that I can at least conceptualize and every, every type of person that I've helped, you, it is far smarter in this market to take your home's equity to live and preserve those assets, especially if those assets have dropped, which is happening right now for everyone, darn near everyone. There might be one person who's made the right moves, but I haven't met them yet. And I know, I know some pretty smart financial minds. So that's number one. If your assets have dropped, you need to protect them. Number two, and this is, this is more of a, I, I don't know what your situation is. Your money might be qualified, meaning that they're gonna pull taxes out of it. It might be non-qualified. If you have non-qualified money or your, your money's in savings and it hasn't really been hit, then you're, you still wanna look at using your home equity, but you might be all right. But if your money is qualified, meaning as soon as you take it, you're gonna take not just the money, not just the money in a down market, but that money in a down market getting slammed by taxes. I don't know what your bracket is or anything, but you probably do or your CPA does. That. There's a dragonfly that just flew. Wow, you can't see it. it. Flew like right in front of my face. If you're in that position, you have to look at taking your home equity. It's just a, you have to. You do. So if this resonates with you, and if you want to explore, hey, can, number one, can I? Because not, every, not everybody can get a reverse mortgage. I think I've said that in every single video. You've got to have, you have to qualify based on your equity. We do look at your income and we very loosely look at your credit as well. Not, not massively, but we just want to make sure that you've been financially responsible and that you'll continue to be financially responsible um, once, you, once you have this. But if you do want to explore, hey, could a reverse work for me? And if so, how will it work? What will it do? What are the goods? What are the downsides? What are the fees? What are the rates? All that stuff. Then feel free to reach out. Um, my name again, probably you might know me, you might have seen a few of these before, but my name is Jason Eichmiller and my contact info is below, but you can, you can get me a phone. My phone number is 888-309-9705. My email address is jason at keyhomelending.com. And if you just want to schedule, if you don't want to call or email and you just want to schedule a time to chat, you can always visit the website at www.reversequotes. It's like quote with uh, plural. So reversequotes.com. 
So I appreciate you. Thank you for hearing me out. Hopefully you and <laughs> you enjoyed this uh, this nature walk almost as almost as much as I do. I, I love doing this stuff. So uh, yeah, I, I appreciate you. And really, if you're if you're relying on investments and you've got a decent amount of home equity, then this is this is something that you need to at least be aware of. And it absolutely doesn't hurt to get an idea of, hey, will this help me? Can I qualify for it? And I'd be glad to do that for you. All right. Take care of yourself. Hope you have a, a wonderful day and uh, feel free to reach out if, if you need me. Take care.